Good morning, everybody. Oh, this is why I don't fix lighting during the show. Because <laughs> I wasn't ready. Excuse me. Good morning, ATX Hitman. Thank 400 uh, bits from ATX. We got made by Erica with 100. Jody and Kitsap, thank you very much for the gifted tier one sub. Welcome to the Carla Marie Anthony Show. My name is Anthony. I'm Carla Marie. Ricky is in the chat, so everyone say hello to Ricky in the chat. It's raining here this morning. I was well. actually, I messaged Ricky and Carla Marie yesterday, both individually on Instagram, because yesterday was the celebration of, I think, I forgot what birthday it was, but the birthday of Teddy Roosevelt National Park, which we all went to on the way back from New Jersey as we road tripped across America on the uh, fun employment tour. And I told you that that was where you almost killed a bison. I didn't, I did not almost kill a bison. I got pulled over for speeding. Totally different. Yeah, it was yesterday. Um, Theodore Roosevelt National Park in North Dakota was established on this day in 1947. 1947. So 75 years old. Why would you say it like that? I was just making sure because my dad was born in 45. That's how I'm doing my math now. That is where I got pulled over, though. And I had that ticket for a while. I think they were about to suspend my license no, or something. Not them. You paid those immediately. No, I didn't. I paid them both on the same day. It was the other one. Remember, they didn't have an online? Yeah, Missouri made it a little more difficult. There was, like, some random county we were driving through in Missouri. But you did get a, a, a lawsuit from them. No. It, they said they were going to uh, suspend my license. No, 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 no. Apparently, yes. their court, the way they were processing, it was something along the lines of, like, the way they were processing payments okay. was not secure, not something, and you may be able to... Get oh. money from them. Oh, so I can a get my money back. Thing. Yeah. Okay, I got to take a look at that. But you might have to drive there to get it. You'll probably get a speeding ticket on the way. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I for the North Dakota, for the National Park speeding ticket I got, I actually got a call from a park ranger who was like, hey, just checking up. We're trying to collect all of the money for our, <laughs> our, parking, our uh, speeding tickets. So let me know if you can do that. That was where they kept running your, running your license. They were like, Excuse me, this says you're a female? Yeah, there was a, a bunch of issues with that because not only did my license at the time say that I was female, their system like wasn't working with Washington's system and it wasn't pulling up the information properly. Yeah. I think he thought I was like some weird criminal on the run, which I guess I was because I got pulled over in Missouri before North Dakota. Mm -hmm. So I did have a criminal record at that point. Anyway. Oh, yeah, he was. Ricky's right. He was going to make one of, one of you guys thought you had to drive instead of me. Which would have been clearly a much safer trip. No, that's not true. I got us here safe. It wasn't unsafe. It was just fast. <laughs> that's it. A couple things we're going to talk about today as we get through Hype Trend Level 5. I think we're 40% of the way there or close to that. So, Carla Marie said she in our podcast this morning, she said she had something she did this weekend that she wants to inform me of. Yeah. That's Is that why I have small. the lottery on there? Yes. Okay, so playing the lottery. Um, also, it is Stagecoach Week. I, oh, man, we should have been... We got to go change. Why? We should be country-themed all week. And what? I got all my country stuff. Go put something on. I don't really have country things. I'm just wearing cut-off t-shirts and can shorts. Can I get a pair of pants that I might be wearing? Oh, yeah. I can't put them on right now. Okay. Wait. Why can't you put them on right now? Because it's too much at the moment. Okay. Uh, we also... Like I said before, have the six reasons you uh, might be headed to a divorce or a breakup. And... This is something we want to remind everyone of every day this week. We will be off next Monday on May 2nd because we're going to be coming back from Stagecoach. And I think that's our first real day off, like without a technical difficulty or something like that this year. Oh, and the cat, the cat came. I don't think you're ready for this, Joey. Are you ready? What are those? Is that a quilt? Why'd you get those? I rented them. You rented them. I'm going to have to, like, I bought tape to have I mean, they're not that bad, actually. They're very, like, Americana because they're red, white, and blue. But I could only wear them if we're only going at night. Like, I can't wear these all day. Oh, no, you'll you'll sweat right through those. Powerful. What if you put it in a in a bag and have, like, a, an outfit change halfway through? Um, They're not going to fit in my pouch. You're going to want to come over this way a little bit. In your pouch? Oh, because you're not bringing a backpack. Oh, it is shot time. Thank you very much to everyone who put the shot glasses in there. <laughs> Carla Marie? Yep. You got him ready? Oh, All right. What are we drinking today? Well, our friends at Seattle Cocktail Club sent over some stuff for me to mix up and pour out. 
And this week is has oatmeal National Oatmeal Cookie Week. Um, oh, oatmeal cookies are so well, good. Oatmeal, oatmeal raisin cookies are the best. Oatmeal cookie day is April thirtieth, so we as a show make it Oatmeal Cookie Week. Okay, so, so we are having an oatmeal cookie shooter with butterscotch schnapps, Irish cream, and cinnamon whiskey. Oh, damn it! What? I didn't bring the um, the mixer. It's a, the, no, I have the mixer. I didn't bring it, but it's okay. What do you do? What did you not bring? The measuring cup. I'll go get it. Why? Because you need to measure this out properly. We're not. We're not having a crappy drink. Okay. Um, where's my glass? Ow. No, don't take. That's why you wanted to go. Oh, good. Oh. But she was eating. She so follows me everywhere. 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 These cats have problems. Um, I can't wait to talk about what I got into this weekend, but really quick, because I'm assuming we'll talk about Stagecoach, but the struggle that I am having, and I was talking to Erica, Erica Shea, the human, on the phone yesterday, because she's coming, of like what to pack, because it is 101 degrees there during the day at, in Palm Springs, and at night right now, let's see, it is... Is this a joke? Okay, 60s. It'll be, that's actually not bad at all now that I look at it. 67, 68, 59. But when you go out in the middle of the day and it's 101 degrees and then you don't go back home and it drops to whatever and you don't have a backpack, like I'm just going to carry a pouch because I can't carry a backpack all day. It will kill me. What do you change into? So I've been having that struggle. Normally, as long as you just have some sort of jacket to throw over yourself, you're okay because my legs will be fine. You're in a crowd. It's all right. But yesterday, and this is where Instagram got me, an ad for Mega Bay popped up, which is um, the like the thigh rub, like deodorant that you can put it on. Not deodorant, but like you put it on your legs. And I commented and was like, oh my God, I'm going to Target right now and getting this. And they DM'd me and were like, hey, we want to send you some Mega Babe. So they, That's a bad business proposition for them. Well, I told them they're decision. not going to get it to me in time by stagecoach, oh, okay. so I'm going to go to Target today. So what do you do? You, like, lube up your legs? Yeah. So, like, guys will never understand this unless you wear short shorts or a dress. Okay. 99.9% .9 of females' legs rub together. Okay. There were two times in my life when they didn't. When I was eight years old, <laughs> actually maybe even younger, and at one point when I was ridiculously too skinny and should not have been that, too, that okay. skinny. Okay. Your legs rub together. Okay. So when you're walking all day and you're sweating and you're like, you get like thigh chafe and you get all these little red bumps and then they just keep getting worse because they can't get better. They just keep rubbing. This is essentially like um, something that just helps them smooth and like glide together. Easily. For the mailman said, mailmen completely understand this. Trust I, me. I believe it. I had my nipples chafe once, but that's because I was doing like a half marathon and I didn't realize that I guess once you run a certain distance as a guy, yes. I guess it works as a girl too. They like your shirt, if you have a cotton shirt on, it just like rubs your nipples the whole time. Yeah, ask Andy from the office. He knows. That was rough. <laughs> your runners chafe as well. Angela in Spokane, thank you for the reminder to bring the anti-chafe. I have some for when I do races. Yeah, like an all-day festival in the mm -hmm. freaking temperature of hell, you definitely need it. That's why I'm really just dressing like I'm going to work out every day. I'm wearing tank tops and comfort workout is shorts. Comfort That's is it. key. Exactly. My theme this week is country comfort. Okay. That's why you got your quilt, your quilt pants. Because, yeah. I did get a pair of jean shorts this weekend that apparently are going to be life-changing, said the girl at the store. Seems like something a girl at the store she would say. She told me after I bought it. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go. What do we got? I'm ready. Uh, by the way, if you type in cocktail, exclamation point, and the word cocktail, you will get a direct link to all the drink recipes that are as seen on the Carla Marie Anthony show. This is um, cinnamon whiskey and uh, butterscotch schnapps mixed in already. Cinnamon. Thank <laughs> you, Dave C84, for the five gifted subs. Appreciate that. And this is – did you not put enough? What did you do? You got to explain what you're doing. I, I, I didn't put the right amount. Okay. Now I did. I feel like you're not prepared and today. And this currently. is um, Irish cream. Mm -mm -mm. How much is you supposed to put in? <clears throat> one, well, this is to make two shooters, so it's one and a half ounces. So it's one and a half ounces of Irish cream. 
And this is our recipe for two. Yeah. Keep that in mind. So if you're just watching this, make sure you go to uh, Seattle Cocktail Club. at seattlecocktailclub.com slash CMA. Or you can just type in exclamation point and the word cocktail. I feel like everyone should have a Carl Marie and Anthony cocktail party and they should serve all of our drinks. Go for it. Mm-mm-mm. I need a song here. Nope. We'll go to jail. No. We need, and we can't even have like someone make up a song for us because like no, even if, no, even if Brody did a like a parody, uh, that yeah. would get flagged. Usually, yes. Just gonna wait here. By the way, I found out that I did layer the cocktail properly last week. Okay, cool. Well, we said you did one of them. One of them were, looked great. This has a strainer attached. You should be straining at the end. Oh, no, we, uh, we can play the birthday song. We just played it a little while ago, Julie. The birthday song, I guess the, the Arabic birthday song people did not care about copyrights. So well, Or YouTube it, doesn't care about them. No, or Twitch. It just means that they don't have a record label, honestly. It's the a damn record shame. labels are the ones that. It's a damn shame. Ooh, I did Jackfire and Apple Cider as a drink. Not a shooter all winter because of you guys. Cool. Damn. That actually was very good. All right. So cheers to oatmeal cookies. Wait, I got to make sure you look To stagecoach. Do we have any of these still available for sale, Carla Marie? Uh, we don't, but you can add them to a box on happybox.com. Cool. Cheers, Carla Marie. Cheers to everyone who supported. Cheers to the bartender, the Seattle Cocktail Club. Mm. Okay, that's dangerously good. Mmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. Did you finish it? Mm -mm. How did you not finish it yet? It's good. It was a lot in my mouth. It was. That's what she said. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. Give me that every day. That actually was very... Is that what we're drinking tomorrow as well? Yep. I That's... might even take it with us. We'll take a shot with your cousin, <laughs> Michelle. We can. Um, Michelle makes very good drinks, by the way. Maybe Michelle can make us actual oatmeal cookies since she bakes. Okay. You'd have to tell her, like, now, because she's got a real job that she does. No, that, that, no, because every baker can just whip them up for you. Yeah, but they can. But it depends on how much time they have to do the whipping. You know, the whipping of up. Whipping up. Um, there is something I need to uh, talk about really quick. Erica said, wait, it wasn't Erica? Erica Shay, Erica the cat, or Erica, Erica in the chat? Erica P31 in the okay. chat said, CM, did you watch Selling Sunset yet? So I'm a big Selling Sunset fan. Oh. Um, hmm? You are? Yeah. Oh, okay. Love that show. It's good to know. Christine Quinn, the evil one. Remember she put me in one of those like Instagram groups? Oh, yes. And I do was like, that. hey, babes, comment on each other's profiles. And I was like, is this real life? What is happening? So anyway, I always talk to uh, my friend Shelly, who works for Windermere Real Estate here in Seattle, who helped out and was a big supporter of the podcast mm -hmm. when I did the Windermere podcast. We always go back and forth because obviously she's in real estate. So anyway. I turn on Netflix on Saturday night is about to like meal prep for a few days. And I see a new season just appeared. Like yeah. I wasn't paying attention. I was like, oh my God. I hit play on that season and I watched the entire season. Straight through? <laughs> Straight through. Straight through. I cooked for a few hours wow. and then I finished like I'd say the last hour and a half on the couch just getting some work done. What a wild weekend. It was not. And now I'm like, well, now I got to wait how long till the next season? Because I watched it like a long Titanic. That's a lot. I do have to try to stop myself from doing that because I'm the same type of person. I can watch all of them in a row and I have to tell myself, like, no, you enjoy this show and you would like to enjoy it on more than one day. Yeah, but again, here's the difference. It's reality TV, so it's like whatever. Yeah. But I, I, I'm going to do a little experiment with my brain because... Sometimes when I watch that much of it, I don't like retain mm. all of the information. And I'm also watching the Kardashians on Hulu and they release an episode for a week. And now I'm like, well, I'm like dying to find out what happens when Kim is on yeah. SNL. Um, so I'm going to see what the difference is. Oh, yes. And they're doing a reunion show this year. Thank you. This season, Erica. But let me tell you, these, these bitches are crazy. Is it all the same women from the last season? And they always bring in like a new person and they're all like, I honestly feel like a, an absolute garbage bum blob when I watch that show. Why is that? Because they're all super, super skinny. Like okay. 
some of them, like, you, sh- they should not be that skinny, but for health reasons. I mean, they and should be whatever skinny they want to be. Eat a piece of pizza. But their outfits are absurd. Like, like in a good way or a bad way? Both. Okay. Some of them are just so ridiculous. Like, no, you look like chaos. But they're also, like, wearing, like, head to toe from, like, hat to purse to shoes, like, Dior. And it's, like, mm. all, like it's just their outfits must, must cost, like, $8,000 every day. But also some of it is, like, so hot pink and bright that I'm, like, you can't get away with wearing this just to work. Only because you're on a reality show, you can. We have to uh, read out Seattle Cocktail Club's comment in case people were looking at Uh, the website for the oatmeal cookie drink recipe. They said, oh man, there's nothing like starting Monday morning realizing you forgot to do something last week at work. The oatmeal cookie recipe isn't up yet, but I'm sure it will be pretty quickly. I don't think you're allowed. I don't think you have the authority to do that. (laughs) Um, I do want to say something. I did get back from Michigan last night. I got back from Detroit. I had a great weekend with my family. My One of my brothers was there. The other was on uh, vacation with his girlfriend. Mm-hmm. My parents were there. Two of my cousins, my fu- my cousin's family was there. It was phenomenal. I got to see my aunt my uncle who still live there. And it's weird because we grew up going there so often um, when we were all younger. And we'd go to my uncle's church because he was a priest there for like 30 years or something. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was weird. It was almost like, Going into a time capsule. It's cool. Because, like, I hadn't been to that church in probably 10 years when oh, my wow. cousin got married. And even then, it, was, it wasn't it was for, like, the regular church of kind course. of festivities, if you will. Um, and I saw all these people who I knew as little as a little kid. But now I, I've seen them 10, 15, 20 years later. It was really, really cool, but in a weird way. It was weird in a cool way, I should say. Um, and I did get some more Detroit-style pizza. How was that? Which was phenomenal. And I traveled in a suit both days. Did you feel super like uh, like you were a sports agent? I feel like people were looking at me different. I feel like I got treated a little better at the airport. Should I travel in a suit to stagecoach? I think you should. <laughs> a, a denim tuxedo, maybe. <gasps> oh, my God. What do you Canadian think would happen tuxedo. if I wore these pants? Oh, oh the you airplane. would get... Yeah, people would think you were about to fight a flight attendant in those pants. Um, but I had my suit on on Friday because Friday was our Orthodox Good Friday. And... I wasn't sure if I was going to get there in time. My family was going to get there in time to go with my uncle to his church. Right. So I wore my suit directly on the plane. Just said, screw it. I'm, it's not that uncomfortable. And then on the way back, it was Easter Sunday. So I left from my uncle's house directly. Like I did church, whatever, hung out, came back, and just kept my suit on the whole time. Um, and this time I had a little, they gave me like a little pin when I walked into church. I don't know if anyone else's church does that. But it was like a little angel. Yeah, and I didn't realize I was wearing that the whole day. Just a little fake gold angel pin. Uh, Jen said, fashion icon worthy to wear the suit on the plane. I know. I think, and people, I got complimented on my shirt and my outfit a couple times. So. Where? In church, though? No, no, on the plane. You were wearing a Roosevelt shirt underneath? I was wearing the tie-dye Roosevelt shirt. And when I went to the clear slash TSA check-in in mm-hmm. Detroit Airport, the one of the two people, there was a woman there and a guy there, and the woman was like, I really like your shirt and your whole outfit. I said, thank you. Because hmm. I'm a fashion icon, girl. I should have said, I know, babe. You should have said code CMA20. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, we do have to get into playing the lottery, which you told me to put on the list, Carla Marie. And then after oh. that, we're going to get into these six reasons. You're probably on your way to a divorce or a breakup. Okay. So... Let me tell you about my weekend. Oh, my God. You bought all those? Are you giving away our numbers? Can people now scan that somewhere? No. Or are they all losers already? So. What is uh, this? Wait, just wait a minute, okay? Let me tell the story. I woke up Friday morning. <laughs> I First of all, I've never played the lottery in my life before okay. Friday. I wake up Friday morning and... From a dream, and in my dream, I specifically was texting someone, and I said, what room number? And they said 430, 430. Okay. And I woke up from the dream, and by the way, in the room, there were kittens that I was helping rescue. Okay. So anyway, I wake up from the dream, and I'm like, whoa, I remembered a number? That, like, when have I ever just, like, remembered a number from a dream? So I immediately texted myself, and I looked at the time, and it was 717, so I was like, I'm going to write down that number, too. Whatever. And then I okay. also, something happened where I was like, oh, 100, and I wrote down that number. 
So I went back to sleep, woke up, and then in the middle of the day, I was like, oh my God, I forgot. I have to play the lottery, 4-3-0, but I don't even know how. So I called my dad. I'm like, dad, I had a dream. You need to walk me through this, 4-3-0. He's like, that's my birthday, like, in the box. His birthday's 4-0-3. So I'm like, you need to explain all the steps to me. I don't know what to say when I get there. Okay. And he's like, okay, you want to do, he said, 4-3-0 in the wheel, which basically means, like, it could come out anyway. He's like, but you want to get it on separate tickets because if you win, like, 4-3-0 or 403, mm-hmm. and you w- or you win both or something, then you're going to end up paying taxes because it's a lot. So if you put it on separate tickets, you can cash it in separately. Okay. So whatever. So I go, and I go to Safeway, and I start, I said, can I get 4-3-0 um, on the wheel? She's like, we don't have the wheel here. And I was like, uh-huh, uh-huh. And I realized that's I just don't new- understand what the wheel is. Basically, I, from what I understand, it's like in the box, same thing. Like I don't know what in the box means. Oh, four three zero comes out, but then I can also get all the numbers four zero three three four zero. So any combination of those three numbers. Yes. Okay, that she's makes like, that's way easier. She's like, we don't have that here, and I was like, oh my god, it's a New Jersey thing. Okay, I was like, well, um, I have no idea what I'm doing, so I just need to get that, and then I'm gonna play, and then I also played Mega Millions and Powerball with those numbers. And then my dad told me other numbers to play. So this. So is, how many tickets did you get, and when is the drawing? Oh, it doesn't. This is where. It, it happened. So oh, I, it happened. So. Are we rich? I call my dad. He's like, well, you should have got them all individually. So now I'm at home on FaceTime and I'm writing out all the individual numbers. Okay. So I then walk to the convenience store over here to get the rest of them. Why couldn't you get them all? Because I one? forgot to get them at Safeway. The oh. 403, okay. whatever. Yes. So then I realized, oh my God, I forgot to play the 717 and the 100, but I can't go back to either of the places I went to. So I drove to 711. I didn't win. I had 100 and I had 101 and 112 came out. Mm, close. And no I cigar. also didn't win a Mega Millions or the Powerball, but it was only $8 to play all these things. So all of this is... is oh, no, wait. It's more, it's these more. are all losers. You paid $8 Six, to be a loser. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Oh. It was about $15 to be a loser. So 15 bucks of losing tickets are on that table. On yeah, this but, table. but you can scan them as losing tickets and then, like, get put in a raffle for something else. Have All you done I, that? I tried. Their app sucks. I need to have a conversation with the Washington Lotto. You know, we actually did. Uh, you know, I was so mad that when I was marching around Washington on Friday to play these lottery tickets because we told them, we need to do a campaign with you guys where you teach millennials how to play the mm-hmm. lottery because we don't know. I said, uh, yeah, with the whole the whole concept, because they came to us and they said, we have a steep decline in people playing the lottery. It's, you know, uh, boomers, Gen X, they, they play and then it just falls off. Mm-hmm. You guys are kind of plugged into the millennial generation. What do you think? We should do. And we gave them this whole plan of like, you know, YouTube videos on how to play the lottery, like an introductory lottery thing, all of it. And they loved it. And then we never heard from them again. I'm going to blame They themselves. probably took that ticket and or took that idea and no, went somewhere else with it. I can't find it anywhere. And I was on their website and their app putting in my zip code and it kept telling me there was nowhere to play the lottery in my area. Meanwhile, you just did, right? Yeah. Well, they need to, uh, with all that money they get for free from people. And I will say, when I walked into 7-Eleven, that man was definitely judging me. He was very confused as to why I was playing the lottery, and he knew that I didn't know what I was doing. Because you wanted to be rich. But let me tell you something. I understand why people get addicted. I kept scanning this ticket to see when I was going to win. As Fred the Mailman said, he said, this is why the uh, lottery players are one step below crackheads. Well, and my dad, so my parents worked their entire life. Maybe one step above. I guess it depends Maybe on... Maybe he's trying to say the yeah. below. Um, my parents worked at the Meadowlands Racetrack in mm-hmm. New Jersey, which is where you gamble and bet on horses. And my you play dad, the lottery there? No, but oh. on the phone, my dad was like, please do not get addicted to this. I'm like, you don't be... Like, I literally go to the casino and I'm like, $1, please? Like, I can't. But, like, they they never, ever would take us there. Like, they never wanted us to go there as adults because they never wanted us to be around that. Mm-hmm. Because they have seen, like, the worst of worst. They've seen people at their rock bottom. Yeah. So, like, we, it's crazy because my sister and I, like, never really got into that. But, um, but now you can do all kinds of gambling there. Yeah. Well, my family, so I have, like, my brother will play uh, sports bets. Some of my cousins will play sports bets. But we also had a family member on each side of our family. One of my mom's side, one of my dad's side, who really, really struggled with gambling. Like, yeah, dangerously same. struggled with gambling. Uh, pawned 
family jewelry, you know, got in trouble with some people you don't want to get in trouble with, if you know what I mean. Um, so I think most of the people in my family, even though we're, we're like light gamblers, right? Like I'll go to a casino. I don't really sports bet on sports. Um, you don't really, but sports. we have, we have a good understanding of how it can go bad yeah. very quickly. So I think most people do it in a uh, responsible manner. Same. So, and that does help that your parents were involved in it for so long because they do see the, the bad side of it. Oh yeah. Uh, let's see. So playing the lottery. So all of that was to tell us you didn't win. <sighs> well, you don't, you don't have like a hidden ticket where you're like, except for this okay, one. Okay, so I check was, under your seat. You got a car. Though. I was ninety nine percent sure I was going to win the lottery. I didn't Everyone know if is. it was going to be. Everyone's 99% the, sure. I didn't know if it was going to be the pick three, oh, couple, hun- people the bar couple hundred bucks. But then I was like, well, the Mega Millions was, one of them was like 22 million, one was 400 million. I forget. Powerball, yeah. Mega Millions. And I was sitting there like, would I tell Anthony or wait till he comes back? <laughs> like, this is where my head was at. And then I, I immediately know, so your cousin Rudy, he's mm-hmm. our lawyer, and I, he, I've, Asked him before, what do I do if I win the lottery? Call you immediately? And he said, yes. So I was like, well, I would immediately call Rudy. Yes, of course. And I would, my parents would know because they knew the numbers I played, but I would have to tell them. Yeah, but they're not checking the the Washington lottery. They were because they knew what I was doing. So I was going to have to tell them to zip it and tell no one in the family that I had $400 million right away. And then I was going to vanish for a bit. Oh, yeah. I would, listen, if you, if all of a sudden, like my social media is wiped and I'm not here and we're not doing podcasts or whatever. I definitely won the lottery or I got no, arrested. I uh, marijuana just felt bad for you, Carla Marie, because you were a loser and gifted us five <laughs> subs. <laughs> thank you. Uh, and thank you to, what is that? Can you read that one? Angela. There's a lot going Angela on there. Angela Asher's mom in up. Oh, in UP, Upper oh. Peninsula, right? Oh. Yes. Isn't that what it is? Uh, thank you very much for subscribing with Prime. Now, on to the biggest thing today. I talked about this in the morning show podcast this morning. These six reasons you are likely headed to a divorce or a breakup, according to a marriage therapist. Ooh. Okay. And I had to actually like take notes on this because some of these are pretty in-depth. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, well, don't show the notes ahead of time. You're just, you're really showy with the camera today. I don't like what you're doing here. Um, so these are the things that this marriage therapist has identified as six traits for the couples that she works with that end up getting divorced or end up breaking up if they're not married yet. First one is something called harsh startups, okay? Now, a harsh startup is something like, it's usually... A combination of you talking to your partner, Mm -hmm. your spouse, and words like never or always or things like that. So an example would be you never take out the garbage. You never clean up after yourself. You're always on your phone. What? Why are you looking at me like that? You tell me. Oh, that sounds like a harsh startup, Carla Marie. You always leave your (laughs) stuff on the counter. You do. But so, no, I will say, I learned this in like, it was Glamour or Cosmo like years ago mm-hmm. that you should never do that. And you should, I'm going to see what they say, but it's something along the lines of like, hey, can you just try to do this or. So one of the examples they gave, and the good thing for this list, by the way, is there are solutions to basically everything. And and really, I'm not going to get into the solutions in depth because the solution is essentially do the opposite of this. Okay. So be smart enough to figure out how to do the opposite of these six negative things. But the example that the author used was instead of saying something like, you're always on your phone when you get mad that your partner is on their phone, Mm -hmm. say something like, hey, I'd like to talk to you. Do you think you could put down your phone for a second? Or, hey, I'd like to watch TV with you. Can you put down your phone? Yeah, I I try these tactics with you, but they don't work, so I'm going to start screaming at you. (laughs) Um, So that was number one. That was harsh startups. Number two, which I don't like that they did this, is actually four things. Known as the four horsemen. Are you familiar with the Four Horsemen, Carla Marie? Not the wrestler, uh, the wrestling faction. I was thinking the Headless Horseman. No. So the Four Horsemen is actually from a biblical story about the apocalypse. It's the Four Horsemen of the apocalypse, and they are criticism, defensiveness, stonewalling, and contempt. Is that actually them in the Bible? Yeah. Criticism, defensiveness, stonewalling, and contempt. Mm-hmm. Actually, I don't think it's those in the Bible. I don't know why I said yes. But anyway, I have to go back and check. So... 
the way they describe criticism is using being critical as an attack, okay? So using something like, um, using it as to point out a character flaw as an attack. So it's not just a complaint, right? So, it's, it's, an up, it's like upgraded from a complaint. So, what, so do it to me. <laughs> criticize you? Yeah. Um, it would start, it would sound like a harsh startup, mm -hmm. according to the article, but it could be something like, um, what's a good example? Brother? See, you yeah. can't think of any. I'm so perfect. Oh, yeah, that's that's 100% it. No, if I was to if I was to say something like, you're so sensitive, but as an attack, right? Okay. Like, I'm attacking your character with my criticism or with my complaint or, or but whatnot. But that's who I am. Um, the next one is defensiveness. So defensiveness would be essentially someone is complaining about something that you're doing. Your partner's complaining about something you're doing. But instead of actually listening to that complaint, you immediately start to negate their complaint um, or attack them instead, mm -hmm. right? So you're not actually listening to the, the... Yeah, but it's like, but you are not sensitive and you don't understand my feelings. Or you're crazy. I don't do that. Something like that. <laughs> All right. Uh, stonewalling is exactly what it sounds like. And this is the one that I would say I am most guilty of in almost every one of my relationships, both or all family, uh, friends, work, romantic, all of it. This is what I'm guilty. I would have to raise my hand and say this is what I'm the most guilty of. Stonewalling is when you are getting some sort of critique, right? You are getting some sort of complaint, uh, and you just shut down. And you don't respond. You just kind of sit there and go, and you withdraw from the conversation. He says, okay. Yeah. That's 100%. What okay, that is like, that is my biggest pet peeve about you. If I'm expressing something that I, sometimes I'm like, just, just yell back or just not yell, but like, just, mm -hmm. he'll just go, okay. Yeah. Okay. Or, I mean, I used to, I used to in relationships literally completely shut down and I would just sit there. I wouldn't even get an okay. <laughs> you would get nothing. Literally nothing. That's so unhealthy. I know. I, but you don't do that really anymore. No, not we as much really anymore. We really also argue. Yeah, not, I don't do that really. I mean, I'm trying to get better, but. You are, from the beginning of our relationship to now, you are, you're a 160. 160. Uh, let's see. And then contempt. So contempt is, out of the four horsemen, which is the second reason people often end up breaking up or getting divorced, contempt is essentially uh, criticism on steroids. So it's using that criticism to belittle the person. As, so it's not just an attack. You're trying to make sure that person feels like shit with your criticism. Okay. Okay. Um, and that's how this person explains it. The next thing, and this is what I was a little confused with at first, is chronic flooding. Is this the whole Bible? What is happening? It's chronic. I'm, we're halfway through. No, I mean like. I oh, like you mean like Moses flooding? Yeah. Or Noah? I don't know. Moses spread the oh. sea. Mm -hmm. Noah was on the ark during the flood. Right? Yeah. Um. So chronic flooding is essentially the use of the four horsemen from the last rule, but over and over and over. Like you never get a break from the criticism or the defensiveness or the stonewalling. It's That's almost an abusive relationship. That's not just an yeah. ending marriage. But if you think about it, how many relationships are there where it, when you view it from the outside, when you observe this couple, it just seems like that's all they do is criticize each other mm -hmm. or have contempt for one another. And, that's always going to happen. You're always going to slip into a, a harsh startup, right? Or some criticism or defensiveness. The key is having a break from those. Because at some point, you just can't take it anymore. Right. And that's what breaks the relationship. Whether you actually leave each other or not, the relationship is broken at that point. Um, so the, the whole idea of uh, chronic flooding is this keeps happening. Mm -hmm. All the negative things that we talked about before you never really get a break from. Uh, number four, this was body language issues. So if you have closed off body language when you're arguing, things like that, yeah, which I'm probably guilty of as well. It's probably part of my stonewalling. Uh, I don't know. I try to, I, this is like comfortable for me, but I always catch myself doing this and I stop anytime talking to someone because on my day Friday, like, I don't know, five years ago, mm -hmm. we did a topic about body language and you should never... Be talking to someone like this, unless you're obviously freezing outside, yeah, but this just means you're closed off. So you open your 
arms and it's just a, they may not be like thinking in their mind, oh, she's closed off. It's a subconscious thing. When you see someone like this and they're talking to you, it automatically. Makes it actually your- affects both people. Yeah. Because the person who is cross-armed, oftentimes because that is a closed off position, mm-hmm. it, your physical position affects your mental state. Yep. Um, so it affects both people. But uh, what else? Be open. It was just, I just talk to people like this now. Straight up. <laughs> and everyone thinks I'm going for a hug. Um, so that was number three, chronic flooding. That was no, that was number four. four, body language. And again, like I said, a lot of these things, the solution is the opposite. So if you have bad body language, try to take a mental note of that and adjust it. If you're chronic flooding with criticism or things like that, take a second, pause. Not everything needs to be critiqued or complained about Mm -hmm. in the moment. Um, Number five is failed repair. So failed repair would be if one of the people in the relationship doesn't try to attempt an apology or if the other person who's getting the apology refuses to accept it, right? So let's say we got into an argument, Carla Marie, you said something terrible to me. Mm -hmm. Then you came back five minutes later. Your muscles are so small, you loser. Yes, okay. Then you came back, which for the record, it would be over, like literally (laughs) at that point. Um, So then you came back right away. You said, you know what? That was out of line. I should have never said that. I don't even mean it. It was just, I got worked up. But my response to you then would be, no, you said it. That's it. That's it. I have small muscles. That's it. You're done. You said it. So both par- both parties can be uh, responsible for failed repair. The yeah. person who was offended and the person who did the offense, depending on their side of it. I feel like old Anthony would never accept apologies. Old Anthony was guilty of almost all of this, except for probably chronic flooding. I think. And I don't know about body language. I never really paid attention, which leads me to believe I probably had bad yeah. body language. Yeah. Uh, the last one is hyper-focus on bad memories. So even when something is going good in the relationship, you focus on the thing from a week ago that didn't go properly or the thing from a month ago that didn't go the way you wanted it to. And she said this is one of the most, I don't know why I said gave her, I don't know why I said she. The author um, said that's one of the biggest keys to a healthy relationship is in healthy relationships, even when things are bad, you can appreciate the good parts of the relationship. Whereas in broken relationships or doomed relationships, even when things are going well, you just think of the bad things. Okay. Now, I thought this was a pretty useful. It was like a very well thought out article um, with things I've ne- concepts I've never really thought yeah. of. Do you have the link? Um, I can find it. We can put it in the newsletter this week. I'll find it and we'll put it in there. That means I have to send a newsletter this week. Yes, absolutely. Uh, there's just not going to happen. It's going to happen. We're going to have one for Thursday. I made that up. What? It's not that hard to put a newsletter together. Just whip it up. I'm traveling. <laughs> um, let's see. And, and here's what I want to point out. Just because you've done any of these things does not mean if you're in a relationship, you are headed right now towards no. a breakup or a divorce or whatever. Um, it means if you do these things all the time, it's definitely not a good sign. And you try to change them and nothing works. Yeah. But I'm sure all of us in some way are guilty of one of these things. And that's what the article also says is just because you do one of these things does not mean you're a terrible person. We're human. You're a person, yeah. We're we're human, and and a harsh startup is probably everyone's done it, Mm -hmm. right? You get annoyed. You say, oh, my God, you always do that, right? Easy. We've all all been there before. We've all been defensive. Most of us have, have stonewalled at some point, right, where you're getting some sort of criticism, some sort of negative feedback and you just shut down okay i won't shut down (laughs) i don't know about that i will give you negative feedback right back (laughs) okay um so you'd be you'd be the defensiveness part of the four horsemen well yeah i gotta stick up for myself there you go (laughs) so all of us and all of us have probably had a failed repair where we didn't apologize fast enough or at all or didn't accept an apology so you know it's it's easy to slip up into any of these six things, mm-hmm. but important to recognize it and then try to remedy it. Uh, Angela said she liked the link as well. Apparently, the horsemen in the Bible were not called those. Okay, well, it's from it, the idea is yeah. from the four horsemen. I forgot. Can someone tell me what the four horsemen were? 
someone did earlier. I don't know. War or something. Something about war. Oh, here we go. Lenny said, I know the four horsemen in the Bible were death, war, famthan? And pestilence. This is why I can't read the Bible because I would give up because what do those words mean? Huh. Oh, famine. Thank you. I thought that's what that word was, but I wasn't sure because it's the Bible and there's a lot of words that I don't understand. Like pestilence? I actually don't know what pestilence means. Isn't a is it a pestle? No, what is the thing called where you mix your guac? Pestle. Yes. That's got to be it. No, I don't think it's, I don't think one of the four horsemen was guacamole. <laughs> or hummus. That's definitely a good name for a horse. Guacamole? Yeah. I, oh, I'm sure in, oh, disease. Um, oh, petulant. Isn't, no, that's flatulence. Farting? <laughs> What's wrong with you? Do you think there's any mention of farting in the Bible? I'm going right to hell. I don't know. A mortal, a mortal, mortal, and a pestle. Hmm. That's that's it. Do you still have that big stone one? No idea where it is. Oh, okay. Um, but that's what I had for today. And this is another reminder. What are you looking up, Carla Marie? Uh, this is another reminder that we are going to be off next Monday because we're going to be coming back from uh from stagecoach. Mm-hmm. So this week is a full week. Next week we'll be back on Tuesday. Now, what do you think? There you're... will be a morning show podcast on Monday. Oh, yeah. Um, what do you think you are most guilty of, Carla Marie, in that list of the six things that might mean you're headed towards a breakup? It's a really great, great question. What is this one? Hyper-focus uh, on bad memories. I want to be honest with you. Wait. Uh, defensive, probably. I think everyone's a little bit defensive. I don't think anyone is... Totally comfortable. They are the people who do who are stonewalling and just say, "Okay, they're not." No, defensive. because you're stonewalling. I think stonewalling is a part of defensiveness. I think because I don't. I, I don't think, think I have related. harsh startups because I've done my best to not. Perp- I mean, I may criticize, but I don't do harsh startups. So maybe criticism. Actually, I don't criticize you. I just ask you to please take I'm not, out the no, garbage. No, this isn't just. You've been in other relationships. What What do you think you're most guilty of overall? And there's this this also, by the way, I know that it's specifically for romantic relationships, but I'm sure oh my God, yeah. in friendships and family relationships and work relationships, these still apply. I right, defensive. Okay. What does everyone else think in the chat? What are you most guilty of out of all the things? And I'll go real quickly through the six um the six traits of relationships headed towards breakup or divorce harsh startups so things like you never take out the garbage you always say this you're always on your phone uh the four horsemen so criticism defensiveness stonewalling contempt chronic flooding which is doing those things basically all the time Mm -hmm. uh bad body language failed repair so not making or accepting an apology uh, and then hyper focus on bad memories And I think we've all at some point, um, uh, Lenny said I used to be guilty of all of these. I think all of us have probably been guilty at one of these. No one's in a relationship for the first time and is perfection. Yep, that's the point of your first relationship. And Actually, let me take that back. I think everyone's been guilty of all of these at one point. No, maybe not all at once. Most, yeah, exactly, not all at once. Certain people bring out different things in you. Mm -hmm. Let's see, criticism, bad body language, hyper-focus for me, uh, stonewalling, stonewalling. I think defensiveness and stonewalling are probably, and bad startups are probably the most common. Mm -hmm. But I also think we probably don't realize realize how much we criticize people when it's probably not even necessary or when it can be done in a nicer way. I'm going to be honest with you. I, unless it's a good, harsh startup and, like, you always – you always want to go get ice cream. I don't know. <laughs> I I truly removed, truly removed that from my overall dictionary years of even with family, everything. Because I remember reading that when arguing with someone, never attack them. Mm-hmm. Use it in a way of like, instead of, hey, since you're not always taking out the garbage, maybe I, I can help some days a week. Or you... What the fuck was that? Uh, I, just- you, you always stay at work late. Don't say that. Hey, since you're at work late pretty often, maybe we can do date night on the weekend instead of on a Wednesday. 
instead of like you're always at work late and you're ruining date night. Just there's a way to position it that you're in this together, even though that person is doing something that you don't like. They, you're both in that. Mm-hmm. You're both dealing with that. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, Lenny has a good point. He said, for that reason, I avoid reality TV. It makes it seem okay and easier to criticize. Because a lot of those reality TV shows, when they go into, like, their testimonial or whatever, all they're doing is ripping apart somebody else. It's all about criticism in a lot of those shows. But you could say that about watching regular TV shows where these things happen. Um, no, I think it's different with reality TV. I think because those you're being pitched that they are real people having real conversations with friends or family members or whatever, and they're talking about each other like that. You know, I think that's kind of the difference. As opposed to watching a show like Ozark, being like, oh, this is all made up. These are actors for yeah, drama. and so it's reality TV. <laughs> yeah, but it's, but it's the way it's presented, right. right? Like, Selling Sunset is presented as this is these real, the real lives of these women who are millionaire uh, real estate, whatever, agents. Right? That's what they are? Yeah. Mega Damien Nutt said, that's why I watch reality TV, so I can criticize people that aren't really real instead of my partner. And I actually, I think we talked about this a while ago. My cousin Habib, who uh, runs Young Nails with his brother Greg, when I was down there visiting them last summer, it was when Katie's season of The Bachelorette was going. Mm-hmm. And he was watching it with his daughter, who I think at the time was 11. Okay. Which I, mean, I guess still means she's 11 right now. Um, but... His whole idea was like, I'm watching this show with my daughter on purpose as a learning tool to show how positive and negative relationships look in the real world and what to be, what to expect um, in a positive relationship from your partner and what to avoid and what red flags are in negative relationships. What happens when they get to fantasy suites? I think they turn it off. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. Although Katie didn't, did she ever, she had one fantasy suite, right? Blake. With Blake. She really got a raw deal at the end of that. Because, like, normally you get three fantasy suites, right? At least. I've been so pissed. Which is, although I've heard, I've heard some people do it in the fantasy suite. I've also heard some people just use that time to actually talk because there are no cameras. You have an extended period of time with just that person who you might propose to or get proposed by. No? From. I don't know. Because that's what Molly said. Didn't she say her and Jason really just, like, they spent the night in a tent talking? No, that was that was actually one of their first dates. Oh, so and then when she, they were in the fantasy suite. In one of their first dates, she stayed in the, like, the backyard of his house, and they did a, t- a camping date, and she slept over, and the next morning walked back into the house. This was early on in the episode of the season, mm-hmm. and the girls were like, so they all thought she did it. All of them wearing their early two thousands outfits. It's ridiculous. You, ha- I don't even think it's on Netflix actually. No. I, I have never watched an episode. So good. I've only seen the clips that they, Jason and Molly, have posted. I've never seen a, a minute of that episode I of had that it season. Until then, um, I'm telling you right now, you can judge me forever if I say this. If I get down, if I was on the Bachelorette and I had three guys left, you best believe I was having sex with all three of them. I would. Uh, I mean. You're putting attractive people in rooms together with other attractive people. I would also do that. And a physical attraction and physical part of a relationship is important. Mm-hmm. Let's see. I don't care. Like, Caitlin Bristol gets so much crap for that. What did she do? She had sex with all three guys. And people were like, Guess what? <gasps> all three guys had sex with her, too. Yeah. So if you're going to give her crap, you got to give them crap as well. I feel like she doesn't as much anymore, but. She's married, though, now, right? They're engaged who to is she? Who's uh, the Jason guy? Tartic, who's actually from here. Was he on her season? No. They okay. just met in the Bachelor world. She was with Sean Booth. She, They got engaged. They tweeted at me once when they were driving through Seattle because I was like, oh my God, you guys are in Seattle? I love her. It's a great story. She is hashtag goals. Caitlin Bristow. Oh, is she one of the people that uh, yes, that posted. posted. Oh, I didn't like her very much. Anthony, no, she's got a wine company, a successful podcast, a hair accessories line. Why does that doesn't mean anything to me though? Like I, mean, I can still say I just don't. She's not someone who I look at from what I've been presented and saying think I don't want to be friends with that person. There are some who I'm like, oh, I'd love to be friends with that person. All right, come on, you're ruining my chances of being friends with her. No, you can be friends with her. I don't want to be friends with her. She like rubbed me the wrong way. What was the other one? Tisha? <laughs> Tasha? What was her name? The other one. Tasha. Tasha. Liked her. She seemed really cool. Caitlin, I did not like as a host. 
Just wasn't a fan. Uh, let's see. Danny B said, yes, totally agree with Carla Marie. Uh, also, a lot of people saying they'd also have sex with all three people. I don't know why you wouldn't in that situation. I mean, obviously, you're going to get judged by, like, people in America who wouldn't, but uh, Clayton only was intimate with two out of three females. I don't know why the only is in quotes. Probably I didn't really watch this season, so I don't. Uh, let's see. Oh, she also gets crap because she had sex with Nick V. Nick Vial. Nick. Your boy. My boy. You don't like him. Who's Nick Vial? Nick Vial. Oh, yeah. He. So, yeah, he he's not great. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. I don't really feel. I did get to talk to him once because I had to train him on a, on something that we were doing with oh, Facebook. I, I wasn't even thinking of that. And he was actually, he actually was nice. I was not even thinking about that. On the call, he was nice. So I will say that. Um, but everything, I just don't like the way he speaks. He has his podcast, and I've listened to it like once because our friends were on it, and just, I don't know. He seems kind of douchey. I mean, yeah. But I also have to say when I had my one-on-one interaction with him, my one-on-one with Nick, um, <laughs> he was fine. So I guess that has to, that breaks down my, my opinion of him a little bit. Fred the mailman said sex with all three at once would be an accomplishment. Yes. Could you imagine? Like I what would ABC often do. what would ABC do if I was like, so I, uh, I don't know they probably wouldn't do it. No 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 like if I oh you meant ABC like the station I thought you meant A B and C like you were labeling your guys guy A guy B and guy C. <laughs> David uh, ABC would D. What? Get it? ABC D. D. A, B, C, D, T, F. I don't know. I don't even know what we're saying anymore. There's letters and sexual innuendos. Um, is there anyone that you like, <laughs> Anthony? Yeah, there's a lot of people I like. Just, they're not named Nick. Actually, I take that back. My uncle's Nick, and I love him. Who Do I do I sound like I don't like anyone? Oh, because I didn't like Kay- Caitlin. No, I, I even said I like Tasha. Love Tasha actually. I thought she was great. I think she should be the host by herself, and they should... Boot Caitlin. Okay, neither of them are on the show anymore, so. Who was the host? Jesse Palmer. For Michelle's season? No, it was them. Now yeah. it's, but the last, it's been Jesse Palmer. It was Jesse Palmer, now it's Jesse Palmer again for the next two girls. Wait. Clayton was after Michelle. Oh, there was another, Clayton's a person that went, okay, I missed that one. When was Clayton's season? The last one. Oh, I missed that one. Yeah, yeah we skipped that one. How about this? I have no opinion on uh, Clayton. I don't like him or love him or hate him. So, Jesse Palmer's like the forever host now? I guess so. Him? Big fan of. Okay. I got to work out with him once. Really nice guy. Tacoma Swifty said, yeah, you sound like a judgy tones. I love this because Anthony always says, he's like, you're so judgy. judgy." And I'm like, no, I I have feelings about people. So, how come my feelings about people aren't valid then? Because I'm Judgy Marie, so now you're Judgy Joe. So, Jesse Palmer, um, former University of Florida football player, then he got drafted by the Giants. He was a backup with the Giants for a little bit. And he was doing something with some brand I worked with in New York. And they offered, basically, I was doing this segment called Workout Wednesday. And they said, would you be able to do anything with Jesse Palmer? And we did a whole, like, set of football drills that okay. you could do with, like, your kids or something. And to show them how to like have proper football drills, and I got to do that with Jesse Palmer, and we still follow each other on on uh, Instagram. And every now and then he'll no. like, I swear, every now and then he'll like like a picture. Yeah, check it out. <laughs> I'm just so happy that, that. Are you going to check to see if he still follows me? Yeah, but I'm dying that Tones is more judgy than CM. That's not true at all. It is, but he likes to push his negative, chronic flooding onto me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. F- no, followers. I wish you could search by blue check mark. I want to see who follows me with the blue check mark. Jesse. How do you spell Jesse Palmer? I don't know, is it J E S S E? Did you stop following me? Hmm. Let's see.
And he's not coming up on my phone either. Oh, here we go. Jesse Palmer. You, can't, you don't even follow him, you ding dong. I was. He only follows 483 people, and you're going to tell uh, I think he. I think he uh, trimmed down. Oh, he follows Nick Vial, though. <laughs> What? what is that? I don't know. You hear that? I do. It is time for us to go, though. Hold on. What? It sounds like someone's playing music. It's probably an alarm. Yeah, it's not. No one's playing music. We just have an alarm going off. I guess I stopped following him anyway. Maybe that's why he's not following me anymore, because I unfollowed him, and he, out of spite, was like, this bastard. He had contempt for me. Anyway, it is time for us to go. We are about to record a two-second tunes with people who I am very excited to have on the show. I'm not going to tell you who it is yet, but they will be on the show this week. We're actually recording a lot of games today, so I'm very excited. Thank you very much for hanging out with us. Carla Marie, are you coming back? I'm coming. She's coming back. By the way, even though we don't follow each other anymore, I still think Jesse Palmer's a cool guy. Hurry it up, sister. And there's Max, who does not want to be here. She was probably sleeping nice and comfortable. Now the alarm woke her up. All right. Thank you very much for hanging out with us. If you missed any of this, this will be on YouTube later on today. And we will be back tomorrow. If you haven't listened to it yet, listen to the Morning Show podcast. You can type in exclamation point and the word podcast, and you will get that link to listen to any platform that you happen to be on. Oh. And now i got a cat on my shoulders. (laughs) Oh, there's a neat. Ow. Oh, she needs to get her nails cut. She's the only one that skipped nail cut this weekend. Okay, goodbye.